Hi there, it's time to become an artist. Yes, I know all these videos are kind of like a performance art using mixed media of metal and electricity and fire and carelessness, but today I'm actually going to try casting something artistic and art casting. A fellow YouTuber named Dante, he runs Earth Nation Ceramics, a YouTube channel, and if you're into pottery, you should check that out because he has a lot of great beginner videos for people like me who can't make pottery but want to. He issued a challenge, uh, make a bowl, any bowl, out of anything, sort of. He had some criteria, and he said, you can cast it in metal. So I thought, hey, fire, that's great. So I made this clay bowl. I made this specifically for this challenge. I'll put some video of me making it here. I don't have much footage because camera died and it's not all that exciting to watch. You'll notice that's the kick wheel that I made in an earlier video and not the electric washing machine razor scooter pottery wheel I made because that one is in my laundry room fitting for a former washing machine uh, and it's surrounded by dirty laundry which is not all that great for filming. I'm rambling, I should stop rambling. But I had to make this special for this video you can see it's it's a dark clay, it's slip decorated with a, a Hakame style. And uh, the reason I made this specifically for this is because this is my typical kind of bowl. And if you are into metal casting, a few major red flags should be popping up in your brain right now. To explain, let's go to the drawing fridge. Okay, this bowl, typical of bowls that I've made, I pulled this one just out of my cabinet. It's bowl shaped. You know, here's here's an inside profile, kind of generically. The outside is roughly even thickness all the way around. I can't draw very well. And I have a foot, a raised foot, like this. And I must really like these raised feet sticking out like that because I went through like a dozen bowls that I made that I have around and they all have this. This bowl and most of the other ones also curve in slightly around the rim. That's because I use them for like rice or ice cream or whatever. And I like if you're scooping the ice cream up, this here will make it want to fall into your spoon as opposed to like falling out onto your table. And since I like eating food and not wiping it off the table, I, I made a bunch of them with this kind of inward thing. I want to make the parting line right here, the, the two halves of the, the flasks. And uh, that means I have undercut here and undercut here. Which means if I ram this up with sand all in there, and I try to pull the bowl out of the sand, it's going to rip all this sand out, and rip all this sand out, and it's going to be a failure, and I will, I will die alone and sad, and so on. Although this, the nice, the nice colored glazes look nice, you know, so there's that. The other benefit here is that it's kind of even thickness all the way around and even thickness in here. And I know I can achieve this even thickness because I have a two-year-old who occasionally grabs something and throws it on the ground and smashes it open and I get to see the, the broken edge. And I'm, I'm fairly pleased. This one, however, that I made for this, it's clear glaze. This is all done in clay, red, red clay slip that I splashed artfully and white clay slip painted. It's clear glazed, but it's you know, it's not as, not as colorful as the other one. That one, the inner shape is more like this. See, no undercut at the rim. And the outer shape, it actually gets thicker and then has a foot cut in it, like so. So it has a trimmed foot, which is a requirement of the thing, but it doesn't have my standard pedestal foot, so there's no undercut anywhere. If the parting line is here, I can pull the sand apart and take this bowl out and no sand will fall out, and everyone will be happy, everything will be great for the rest of the life. However, we have a difference in thickness here, 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 see it's thinner here, thicker here, thinner here. I had to do that because of the undercut thing. And that means I'm going to have a, a slight casting issue that I'm going to have to solve with, a, with a, a feeder or something. I'm actually drawing these the shape of the bowl. I'm going to be casting it upside down to be aware of that. Uh, you can get away with more thickness and thin variation a bit with, with clay, in my experience, than you can with metal casting, unless, of course, you add feeders and, uh, and that kind of thing to your gating system. But that's an explanation of the, the vessel form shape, because I, I made this from the beginning intending to cast it in metal. So I had to make some, some sacrifices to my preferred bowl shape, because my preferred bowl shape is for clay. And, and that's great, that's great and all, but I don't get to play with fire 
or melt anything with that because I'm an electric kiln and I'm not involved. So this allows me to melt a bunch of stuff in my garage and, and fulfill my burn lust. I have a whole bunch of aluminum that I still need to melt down into ingots, so we're going to do cast aluminum. A380 cast aluminum for anyone who's, who's interested because I can get a bunch of that for free. Uh, it's probably not the right aluminum alloy, but hey, you know, free. So to start, I've ran up the bottom flask. I don't know if this is going to work, but I've just kind of worked it out in my brain, and this is how I want to do it. Uh, I want to cast, I want to ram this up upside down, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to fill this with sand right to the brim, set it here, and then shove it down using manly strength to hopefully seat that bit onto this sand. Baby powder carefully. So I want the baby powder in the bowl for release. But I don't want any on here because I want it to release good. Makeup brush. Manly metal casting makeup brush. You know, I met somebody today who was a metallurgist. Oh no! Oh no! He was a metallurgist and we had a, a nice discussion and he seemed fairly impressed that I was able eh, to do cast iron in my home. So that was fun. I didn't want to tell him I don't tend to do cast iron because the, the heat, the radiant heat from that, nearly burned my face to death. Is this even necessary? I mean, this is a glazed surface. It's like the smoothest, glassiest thing ever because it's made out of glass. Oh well. Fortunately, if this fails, I can just say, but Dante, I already made a bowl. Eh? I'm taking the really, really long way around by starting with a finished bowl and uh, making it into another bowl. But hey, I like doing the long way. I'm going to be very delicate with the sand rammer because I don't want to break this bowl. But I also don't want air pockets. I'm going to use the, the casting gating method, kind of, that I discussed in the last video with the, the hammerheads, all those extra hammerheads I didn't need. Yeah, little do you know, no porosity is what I want for this final product. Because uh, bad castings, as far as like production castings, I guess for a sand rammer it doesn't matter, but if you're making like something that needs to be structural, you don't want crap mixed in there, and you don't want porosity. But if you're doing like an art thing, you don't want porosity either. It's not that great of an art piece if you have unexpected suckiness in the technical aspect of it. Little known fact, I originally wanted to go to art school out of high school for industrial design. And one thing that made me a little bit frustrated with the art community, the art education community anyway, is when I was doing artwork in school, you would go, you'd go to like a competition, and one guy would have like a pencil drawing, and the shading looked great. I thought it looked great. And the judges would say, oh, that looks great. And then you would go to the state competition, and the judges would say, it looks like a smudge, that's butt ugly. Well, a couple things. How do you know that's not what he wanted it to look like? And what's wrong with it looking like a smudge? The, the last judge said it was great. You said this blows. You're both professors. How, is, how can you have any sort of basis to judge your whatever on? And one guy is like, you're technically great. And the other guy, you're technically sucks. I probably didn't understand it because art's not my thing. And it's a good thing I didn't go in there, especially right when I would have entered school to do industrial design. I want to do automotive design cars. I like cars. And uh, I would have, like, shown up to school and let's design cars. And then General Motors is bankrupt and, and Chrysler is under. And, oh, crap, where the jobs are gone. So I did the logical thing and went to music school instead. Oops. Yeah, and then I switched from music to anthropology. Another oops. And then I went to grad school for anthropology. Oops. whole lot of mistakes were made there. Okay, we're going to pretend that's good enough. Now, this edge does not have a clean, parting, sharp edge. It's a curved edge. So the parting line is where the curved edge points out the most, you know? So instead of the top of this being the parting edge, it's actually down the side, like two or three millimeters. So how I'm going to fix that, I'll show you. To make the uh, parting edge level with this and not the top of the bowl... Oh, no! Oh, no! Mistakes were made. I'm going to set it upside down like so, and try to force it down in there. That's not. That's not going down in there. Um, tappy tap. I'm super convinced that's going to break the bowl. Here we go. Full shaped recess on the back of a plank of wood. And that's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. 
Can I lift that up? Oh, but it went down. And we're going to continue, regardless. Whew, after I catch my breath. <coughs> <coughs> okay, you'll remember this, this copper pipe. I used this in the last video where I did the, the hammer heads, wherever those went. Here's one. Another one I gave to someone. It's not as long. Hopefully it won't freeze on the way to the, the spin trap this time. Just going to line these up like so. So the metal is going to flow in here, go here. I'm going to put a spin trap dealy here. And uh, uh, you saw the last video, maybe. Just going to press this in to the sand. I like molding the runners instead of, uh, whoops, instead of like digging them out of the sand because I find this way they're smoother and you get a consistent diameter. And for my makeshift spin trap again, I'm going to push this in there so the metal will flow in on this side and kind of spin up, spiral up, and that'll kind of be like an out gate. The uh, tapered in gate will be here, and I'll have to clean that up with uh, scooping. I know I said I don't like scooping, but you kind of have to do a little bit. And then I'm going to use this again to uh, raise thing up to cruise. I shouldn't talk. I'm tired. On with the baby powder. One of the rules was that the, the work be signed, and I usually sign with this, uh, where'd it go? This, the blacksmith maker's mark. I push it into the clay when it's leather hard. We're gonna do something different. I'm gonna use this to sign the work, but I'm gonna try stamping the sand because that seems more fun to me. You know, do something weird and different. So I'm probably gonna fast forward through this part, but just so you know, where, where I talked about the extra thickness around this part, uh, I am gonna use a feeder. Here it is. Made out of copper tube, and it just kind of sets there. I'm going to do reverse gravity feed again, so I'm going to tip this side up so the metal will flow up. And the last, very last part that gets metal will be this side of this of the foot ring. So I'm putting the feeder right there. And I'll have to, of course, grind that off and, and clean it up afterwards to, to get a decent looking finished bowl. And now for the signature in the sand. Hope that'll come out. Well, in gate. The uh, spin trap out gate worked almost a little too well, and we got metal running up the feeder. So that's a success. Okay, okay, okay. Many hours later, there's still some heat coming out of this, but like, that's not that's not giving me scalding burns. So it's probably good enough to open. Drum roll. The fingers are not drums. Aha! That is promising. I have a whole ring there, so that's good. Get out the way. <clears throat> Jump cut to the other side. And wrong tool for the job. <clears throat> Ooh, even the sand is toasty warm. No, I'm not slapping it up because I'm frustrated. I'm trying to jar it loose. <clears throat> I'm doing that because I'm frustrated. <clears throat> ah. Wait, wait. Oh, look at... Oh. And the bowl came out. Cool. Okay, okay. I gotta clean this all up. It's uh, it's, it's the grinder's time to shine, and then we'll take a look at the quality. Ta-da! Here you go. The clay one and the metal one. A couple things I want to show you. One, I don't know how well this will show up on camera, but the aluminum one is ever so slightly smaller. You can kind of see up here, I guess. Not really. It's about an eighth of an inch smaller diameter. That's because aluminum shrinks a little more than most other metals. Also, take a look at this. Foot ring and foot ring. Turns out stamping that into the sand works. So I had to, I stamped like a negative, and now I have a a proud maker's mark instead of a stamped in one like all the all the clay stuff. Pretty cool. I was kind of kind of wanted to try that. I tried cleaning off this. Uh, it's it's still visible where that is in part because it's really hard to clean up in a lot of areas. But also you you just 
you can't get this sand cast texture back once you once you grind it off. Like you could polish all of this, and then this this spot would go away. It would just all be polished. But I really want to keep the sand cast texture. And just look at that surface finish. You know, that's that's probably my best surface finish of a casting ever. It's just so nice. And you see all these lines, these lines here, even these little bumps, a couple of them. That's not from the the sand casting. That's actually brush marks from the the slip coming through. I, I glazed this very thinly, only one layer I think. There's a couple little spots where there's like a lump of lump of glaze or a lump of slip that's a little thicker like right there. And that and the brush marks came through in the aluminum. Super nice. Partly what got me this great uh, service finish is the gating system, the reverse gravity feed and the, the, the spin trap and all that. But also I tried something that I've seen Myford Boy do which is to, to coat the sand in uh, talc seemed in his tests like he get a better surface finish and this time you know this this surface finish ah focus focus has a hard time focusing on reflective metal it seems like that's a better surface finish although I didn't do two of these one with and one without talc or anything so I don't have a control group there I suppose it's time to get some measurements it's about five and a half from the outer edge to the outer edge for funsies see this is one this is five and five eighths. So the bowl, the clay bowl, is five eighths or one eighth of an inch thicker, wider diameter than this. What are we going on? About two and a half tall ish? Yeah. Bowl, small bowl, perfect for whatever. I, I smoothed out the rim also, so there's no sharp edges, nothing. Obviously, this isn't microwave safe. I don't know about food safe, but. I mean, people eat stuff out of aluminum all the time, just like stainless steel. This is cast aluminum, so it's got silicon in it. It's not just aluminum. Silicon is like the primary thing added to cast to iron to make cast iron, and people cook stuff on cast iron all the time. I don't know. Maybe it's food safe. Ooh, maybe I'll put my keys in this. I'll put car keys in this at the front door and make like on the on the little table thing that I keep the keys in. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do with this. And on this, I'm going to eat food out of this. I've, I already have. In fact, to film this part, now that this is done, I had to get this out of the dishwasher. Yeah, I don't know which bowl you like better, but I guess leave a comment. Do you like the clay decorated one or the aluminum one? Also on the food safety thing, aluminum, even cast aluminum, when it's molten, it oxidizes really quick. So you get a coating of aluminum oxide, which I think is alumina. And alumina is a very, very uh, large component of clay. So... Not all that different. I probably should have spun that as like, there's a lot of aluminum in clay, so I'm going to make it an aluminum. I should have said that earlier instead of just admitting the reality that aluminum is easier to melt and I have too much of it, so I wanted to melt it down. That's why I picked aluminum. But we'll, we'll just edit that in, right? Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.